Chinese health authorities and the UN AIDS Agency have pledged to fight discrimination against people with HIV-AIDS in China, as 44,839 new cases were reported in the nation in the first nine months of this year, while 6,897 people died of the disease during the same period. According to statistics from China's Ministry of Health, at the end of 2007 there were about 700,000 people living with HIV in China, and it's estimated that 85,000 have developed AIDS. Although this may be low, up to 50 million Chinese are at risk of contracting the disease because they engage in high-risk behavior, such as drug use and prostitution. AIDS was first officially discovered in China in 1985. The first patient was an American-born Argentinian tourist who died at Xiehe Hospital in Beijing. In 1989, in a small village called Ruili in Yunnan province, 146 AIDS patients were found among a group of drug users. In 1995, the number of AIDS patients in China reached its peak as a large group of people from Hanan, Hubei, and Anhui were infected with AIDS after repeatedly using needles from illegal blood sales. In general, AIDS patients make up only a small portion of China's population, about 0.05%, compared to the global rate, but it's still a large amount of people due to the huge population of China. AIDS in China has long been a closeted issue, stigmatized as only affecting drug addicts and the dregs of society, causing it to develop gross misunderstandings and prejudices within the general public. AIDS used to have a reputation as a super cancer, which caused people, including hospital workers, to be very fearful of it. This caused strong discrimination against AIDS patients. The AIDS patients were treated in specific hospitals and supervised by specific doctors. If the patients are found to be infected by HIV in normal hospitals, the doctors will refuse to treat them. According to a United Nations survey, public misconceptions surrounding AIDS in China still cause major discrimination against people living with the virus. This situation means that many people are unwilling to live in the same household, have meals or work with an HIV-positive person. The results of the United Nations survey of AIDS-related knowledge and behavior among the Chinese indicated that misconceptions and discrimination have remained serious despite years of public education efforts. The survey of more than 6,000 students, blue and white collar workers and migrant workers, found that 48% still believe that a mosquito bite can transmit the AIDS virus. Although 80% of the respondents knew HIV can be transmitted through contaminated syringes or unprotected sex, 18% thought they could contract HIV by having an HIV-positive person sneeze or cough on them, which is not true. There are three ways to be infected by AIDS. Blood infected, sexually transmitted or congenitally. The causes of contracting AIDS in China are different in different regions. In Shanghai, most of the AIDS patients are sexually infected through prostitution or homosexuality. Those in the rural areas like Yunnan or Xinjiang are mostly drug takers who share needles. The stigma has reached such a level that all AIDS patients we contacted refused to take an interview. During a phone call between Dr. Su Fei and his patient, the patient explained why he was so reluctant to accept an interview. I agreed to take only the telephone interview because Chinese society still does not understand the disease enough, so there is still a lot of discrimination. I don't want to drag my relatives into the stigma of my disease, so I keep quiet about it and haven't told any of them. I will never tell them. I've had AIDS for seven years. I got it through sex. At the beginning, I was terrified, and then I just felt mortified about what I had done. What I think now is that if I accept the treatment and lead a healthy life, I will still be able to live for years. The fear of being discovered as infected by AIDS is also discouraging people from getting tested and receiving treatment. There are so many reasons that AIDS has such a bad stigma in China. Firstly, we didn't provide enough information to educate the public when AIDS first appeared. Instead, AIDS became known as a type of incurable disease, a super cancer. Secondly, AIDS is often linked to inappropriate and undisciplined behavior. A prominent South African AIDS activist, Edwin Cameron, has said the stigma of having AIDS in China is leading to needless deaths and that more outspoken advocates are needed. 
But the Chinese authorities have a habit of silencing activists. Activists who Chinese authorities consider too outspoken are reportedly threatened, beaten and sometimes imprisoned. Earlier this year, a well-known Chinese dissident and AIDS activist, Hu Jia, was sentenced to three and a half years in prison after vague charges of subversion. Although the Chinese government has in recent years started raising awareness and education about AIDS after years of denying the country had a problem. AIDS activist Edwin Cameron applauded the Chinese government for passing laws against discrimination and giving free antiviral drug treatment to AIDS patients. But he said the free medical care needed to be expanded to cover infections brought on by HIV. Nearly 42% of migrant workers who are usually considered as running a higher risk of contracting HIV said they had no idea where they could receive health checks. The United Nations survey suggested that the Chinese government would need to offer more information about HIV tests and the AIDS virus in general. Jenny Hammond, Press TV, Shanghai, China.